Welcome, welcome to the Sharpway Show. I know it's a late one. Some of you guys are probably not happy about it, but it is a little bit late, I know. 9 p.m. on the East Coast, but I got a candidate who's running for mayor and she's busy doing stuff, so I can't always get her when I want her to be on my show, but luckily I was lucky. I got her to come this evening. I have with me the one and only woman running for mayor of New York City, Stacey Prossman. How are you? How are you? Good evening, Larry. It's so great to be here on the Sharpway Show. I am so happy to have you here. And for those who want more information on her, please feel free to check out Prussman for mayor.com. Now, a lot of stuff has happened recently. <laughs> you <obviously. did? laughs> yes. Um, one of those is completely unfair to you, and that is the media acting like Eric Adams is the mayor, right? I mean, he won the Democratic primary, and now it's like, oh, I guess that's that. I mean, that has to be annoying to it you. It is really it? annoying, but you know, they did that with Hillary, with Trump, right? Not to compare the two elections, but they did do that, right? And so I think it's now time for the people to speak up and, you know, show their vote. It's time more than ever that people, we need to have power back to the people and that our election process is not said and done with a one party system or a two party system. In this case, a one party system. Absolutely. And, and the worst part is that's linked directly with what happened to Cuomo. Eric Adams was all about Cuomo. Remember that? They had the oh, yeah. press conference need- together, all about, oh, I'm, I can't wait, looking forward to working with Cuomo. He was all about Cuomo. He was kissing the butt, Larry, kissing the butt. Yes, he was, absolutely. So now <laughs> Cuomo's going away, right? And the one advantage of Cuomo going away is he did give us, I mean, one advantage of him being there is he did give us a, a female lieutenant governor So now we're going to have our first female governor of New York. It's a great first woman, which is, that's a nice thing. It's a nice checkbox. I mean, it doesn't mean we're going to have a good governor, but it's a nice checkbox. I mean, I I didn't even think about that. Like, I don't even look at sex as leadership. People are like, if you win, you'll be the first woman. If this person wins, it's the first. I I just see it as the first, you know, a person is taking over for Cuomo. They could suck and they could be great. Probably going to suck, but I'm just being negative. (laughs) Um, if it's part of his administration, they're all enablers in my book. And I right. think that, you know, people are going to go down with him. And I was thinking, you know, the state assembly, people knew what was going on. And yes. a man like him just just doesn't quit politics right. with an ego that big. So they yes. had something on him that was way worse than they had on any politician for him to go bye-bye. So that's going to be interesting. No, I'm, well. I'm with you. And, and this is the part that I also you know, hope will help us as a movement in general, which is, you know, all the people around him, you use the perfect word. I'm going to steal that enablers. Right. And they are, they were all in. If he, when Cuomo got in trouble, he literally had no friends, right? Everyone abandoned him. Even no. DeRosa abandoned him. everyone abandoned him. It's, so that means like- they actually didn't love him or care about him. They were just using him for their own power too. Right. right. Right, exactly. People, when they work for people, they want to, you know, politics, as I'm learning, if people just step on each other, they they play, they associate themselves with each other. I mean, I've been in show business my whole life. Politics is a lot worse, Larry. And people (laughs) (laughs) will do anything. And, you know, you're dealing with, with one thing with show business, you're dealing with your life and your ego. Sure. Now, with with politics, you're dealing with the people that you're governing and your ego. Mm, So it can get very ugly. And right. You know, and the, the people damage is a whole hurt. lot more in government than it is in. And if if you're looking at you know show business, if you crash and burn, I hope you don't. But if you do, it's just you. It's you. But if and you crash and manager. burn in politics, it's a whole nother story. So, I think that a lot of people are going to come, be like associated with this with whatever whatever Cuomo had done specifically yes. that we don't know the stories we do know, and then there's things we don't know. Uh, right. The whole nursing home scandal, it might be a lot worse than we ever imagined. Absolutely. Um, who else knows what's in the closet or hiding underneath, you know, a dead person in the nursing home. So, you know, we're going to yeah. see. It could be a lot worse than sexual abuse or me tooing and all that stuff. So it's going to be very interesting. You know, and, and I, you know, the malignant narcissists, when they run or, and when they win office, it can be very dangerous. We have to watch yes. out who we put in power. 
hundred percent. And, Adam, and Adam, Eric Adams, I don't know him personally. I don't want to call, but he's acting like as if he won. Like you have, you didn't win yet. He You're might right. have yes. had a chance at me or Sliwa or Pepitone or the other guy running, uh, Fernando Mateo and Roas. I think that people need to really, you know, be humble before they win. Before it's said and done, they need to be humble. I agree with you because you never know what could happen to him, right? What if he gets linked to one of these scandals that they link him to Cuomo? He could be in trouble. And there are, what, five people running for mayor. Is that right? I believe five or six. There's a lot of just like independent people. I don't really know their names. Uh, right. They're totally independent. Uh, and then there are people that are on parties. Like, right. um, so, yeah. So we're the third largest party. And, you know, Cuomo didn't make it easy for our party at all. I don't think people no. realize what hoops we had to jump to to get on the ballot. Absolutely. We really worked our butt off. Our teams worked together. Larry and, and my team, we all worked our butt off to get on the ballot because of Cuomo's. And, and we're in lawsuits because of Cuomo. Absolutely. 100%. I don't think people 100%. know that. The normals. The normals. Don't know that. We grab a couple of comments. Uh, some people are commenting here. So, okay, um, great. Kareem's like, "Hey, hey, get rid of Bill De Blasio." Well, yes, Kareem De, Bl De Blasio goes away no matter what, right? He's term limited. The question is, who is next? But so that is good. But you know, is one bad thing about Cuomo also get uh, lo lo leaving is De Blasio might run for governor. People hate him. Yes, and he still might run for governor. Yes, oh, it didn't stop him for president. Every party hates him. Every Democrat, they're like, everybody I've spoken to that I, I've told I'm running for mayor, you better get that de Blasio out. I'm like, yes. he's not running. He's not there. Yeah. But, you know, Eric Adams is the same old thing. Like, you're getting the same crap with, with, right. with Adams. I mean, you know, what? look at my policy. See what you like. But, like, you're getting the same stuff, basically. Right. You're not getting progressive. You're not getting anything interesting. You're not going to probably – and nothing is going to change. It's going to be cronyism. It's going to be a lot of bureaucracy. It's going to be a lot of not, you know, nonsense and over policing. Uh, everyone's, you know, leading safety with policing, and that's not the way to do it. I mean, police serve a purpose, but they're not the way to stop crime. Sure, they're, they're sure, not, absolutely. I keep saying that, but you know, we need to get the core of crime, not the people who who arrest you after you do it. Right, 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 take, right, right. We don't need the people to take away their body bag. We need to stop your body, your dead body, from being dead. <laughs> So. Absolutely. Sure. So Daniel says, welcome, Stacey, and good luck to you. I live in Georgia, but still rooting for you. Yes, well, there we go. yes <laughs> absolutely. You. Yes. So speaking of that, you know, you and I are going to be doing a comedy show in yes, New York I'm City so on Friday. Tell me about it, please. We're going to be doing a V-Spot, which is a new, it's just a multi-use club. It's actually owned by the same gentleman, but it's a, it's a, a, a vegan restaurant which has amazing food. It's not like that healthy. I mean, it's healthy, but it's not vegan. Like it's vegan for meat eaters. <laughs> they have drinks and it's a lot of fun. Whoa, 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 no, whoa, whoa. Vegan for meat eaters. As, yeah. It's, um, it's owned by a, a comedian named Alex Carbano. He's um, um, an amazing cook. He has all types of food. I, I just did a little uh, short about the, sh the restaurant with him. And in the back, he opens his own comedy club. He's an entrepreneur and a very talented comedian. And uh, it's going to be. So hold on, guys. For those of you who don't live in New York City, this is New York City. Yes. Vegan for meat eat eaters, entrepreneur with a comedy club in the back. That is, that's New York City. Thank you, Stacey. Yes. yes. Yes, he's a Colombian gentleman, I believe. And he has a little flair of that in the food. He has Italian flair. He has Asian flair. So it's kind of, I mean, the food is delicious. I mean, and it's, I, I, meat eaters come and they eat it and it's filling and yummy. And, you know, and so it's, so it's what, and I'm very big with animal rights. So I really like the combination of comedy and animal rights and, and being really friendly to animals while sure, enjoying yourself. Absolutely. So that's going to be, and laughter is great. We have a great lineup. Um, we could use some more laughter, Stacey. That's for sure. You know, the thing is people keep talking, you know, with the coronavirus and all the mandates and all that, and people are scared and people are fighting about vaccinations and the, and the, and the heart of it, and the, at the end of the day, you know, we really, really need to have fun again. We really yes. need to laugh and we really need to be, you know, human to each other. And we're missing that. Human. Yes. We and need I'm, to be able to interact with each other. Yes, absolutely. And so, if we don't so let do me that, ask though. Let me ask the question. People are going to be asking, is this a place where you have to have your vaccine passport to get in? No, it's not. There we go. No. Okay. It's there not a vaccine passport, please. And I've, I've had shows. I'm not going to mention the name of 
a particular comedy club. I was going to perform a very well-known comedy club and they had to cancel the show because they wanted everyone vaccinated and, and the audience vaccinated. So it's like, you know, some people can't get vaccinated yet for, they just had COVID. I mean, they have, there's a, there's a percentage of people that like literally can't get vaccinated, right? Like mm-hmm. they, their doctor said, it's not safe for you because you're allergic. There's a small percentage. And then there's people that just had COVID. So it's like, you know, we got to do deal with, they, and I, I think the biggest mistake, when I say this, Larry, about the vaccinations, which drives me up the wall, I think we talked about this, was they should have let private doctors with their patients vaccinate them. They should have given the refrigeration to store the vaccines where the patient and the doctor have a conversation. And I believe a lot of people would have gotten vaccinated rather than going to these mass governmental scary sites in the middle of nowhere in these schools or Rite Aid with some creepy person, you know, sticking a needle in your arm. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, that's what I feel. That was my, that's my opinion. So I you think like the, to- you like the idea of the individual talking to their doctor and making that decision. That's what you prefer. Right. I experienced that with my mother and myself. Um, on many occasions, many doctors. So I felt I felt safer about it, and it, mm-hmm. I didn't feel like it was a governmental thing because I trust my doctors. Sure. Uh, and it was many doctors, from my dentist to my, you know, my gynecologist yeah. to my, yes. you know, my uh, facial doctor, uh, dermatologist to my mother's heart doctor. So I had a wide. But, wide but your mom actually is in that scary zone, isn't she? She's she's and she's in that zone. She's in that zone, and we had somebody that passed away. And she's like, I'm getting vaccinated. And this was go. April. This wasn't, you know, so it is a personal choice. I'm just saying, make your personal choice, not from the internet, not from your, you know, not from political beliefs, but from your doctor. That's all I'm going to say. There we go. I like that. Devin asked a question that's kind of off topic, but he says, do you think Kathy Hoka will pardon Cuomo? No, I don't, I don't know. It depends how, we don't know. That's a good question. I don't think she will. Um, I think- unless... Unless she thinks that he may be going down in some way badly, but I don't think she'll, I don't think she'll pardon him. Um, I think they have things on him that could hurt other people. So the, the, he but might here's have- the issue. What people don't know, realize if you pardon somebody, right? Let's say you pardon Cuomo. Now he has to testify. Let me oh, explain wow. what that means. Yes. I you don't know have that- to testify. If you could get in trouble, you can't incriminate yourself, right? Right. That's Mm -hmm. that's our Fifth Amendment. You don't incriminate yourself. But if you get pardoned, then you can no longer be incriminated because you can't go to jail anymore. So now you have to testify. If you don't testify, you can go to jail. Because you're no longer incriminating yourself anymore, right? You're not going to jail. You're pardoned. (laughs) We're going to have him in jail. We'll have Trump in jail. They'll all be in the same cell. It'll be really fun. Well, the funny thing is if he's the only guy who doesn't go to jail, like they pardon him, and he rats everybody else out, but then he doesn't go to jail. Could you imagine that? The whole state senate would be bye bye. The, the whole state goes to jail <laughs> except for him. He's the he's the only politician who survives. Oh my god, that's that's like a movie. That's our I, next. That's our Netflix right there, Stacey. I know it's that's so Netflix. great. It's, it's absolutely insane. I, I'm actually shocked, you know, that he resigned. It's like, what do you do? Yeah. You know. Me too. Yes, absolutely. That was no pun intended, Larry. You said me too. <laughs> me too. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So, wow, that's great. So Joe asked an important question. Joe says, what are the top three issues New Yorkers are talking to you about? In Thank New York you. City, what are they asking you? What are they upset about in New York City? We, we're getting a few things. Um, uh, people, safety is a huge issue in New York. I'm crime, New York, yep. Um, crime, these random crimes, particularly I'm getting. Uh, people who are asking me about, about, about that. Uh, getting homelessness. Affordable housing oh, yes. is a huge, real affordable housing is a huge concern, people, because when they consider affordable housing, it's not affordable to everybody. You just said something that I love. You mixed affordable housing and homelessness, and most people don't. They take them as two separate issues, but you understand that they're actually linked. They're all linked together. If you have an affordable place to live, then you don't end up on the street. Unless by choice, you, some people don't want to live in a home. I've met people. That's true. But that's a rare occasion. But people that need, you know, that need a home and want a home can't afford one. I've I've been in a situation where I've had to move apartments and rents went up. You know, I it's it's been a, it's been difficult for a lot of my artist friends over the years, but even before the pandemic. So real, true affordable housing that's sustainable. Because mm-hmm. people's incomes, particularly in a gig economy, goes up and down. 
It's not, right? not yep. everyone has a job. Then they one year they make fifty, one year they make sixty. You know, it's not like that. And people are taking you know bits and pieces and yeah. putting it together now. Yep. A lot of people work. And that they way. sometimes have really good years and sometimes bad years and sometimes great months and sometimes terrible months. Absolutely. Yeah. So those are very those are issues I've been getting nonstop. There's a lot Crime, of crime, homelessness mixed with affordable housing. Is there one more? Um, the other issue. Is there, you know, the drug issue? People ask me about the, uh, you know, ha having drugs legalized and how that would look. Um, and I put that in the mental health because you can legalize drugs and that's great, but we also need to deal with the addiction. So, sure. Uh, which also is associated with affordable housing and homelessness. So, it, yes. uh, it's all, you know, everything, people, it's not all separate issues. We need to address it holistically. And if we don't do that, we're never going to solve the problems from the core. We're going to put band aids. We're going to, and things are always going to keep being the same thing. So we need to really solve the problems from the from the core, and 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 really get to the onion, peel the onion, yes. and solve. And those are people. That's where people are asking me. The subways are a big question. Mm -hmm. You know, having the subways run smoother. Uh, that's being you know better transportation. I know. I hear that kind, but people are still afraid of the subways, though, aren't they? Yes, aren't they are. Still afraid of subways. Because they're yeah. trapped in a box. And I think we should have, this is my thing, the, the door should open in between. So if something happens in a car, you can go to the next car and yes. you're not stuck. So Absolutely. I think that we should start making the subways, all the doors open. You know, it's safer that way to me, I believe, because you're not stuck in a box. Right, There's Absolutely. more safe patches and things like that. So um, Jack asks, um, is she going to be the first female governor? I'm not sure if you mean Stacy or if you mean Kathy Hochul. Kathy Hochul will be our first female governor. Hopefully, Stacy will be our first female mayor. That would be nice. That would also. be exciting, yes. Absolutely. Yes, 100%. So uh, Fox Galt asks, is there a way you can immediately improve New York City? That's a really tough question. This is a New York City is a big beast of 8.5 million people. It's larger than... The population of New York City is larger than 40 states. So that's a that's a big question. Stacey, that's any, huge, any answer for that? Well, immediately, we need to just um, get the arts back, right? Because that we can do. We can open the arts. We can encourage artists to get here. Um, we can change some zoning pretty quickly, I believe. Uh, so we can get some homes built in places where there, there are blocks, Larry. I don't know if you've seen this. In very nice areas, and blocks of empty storefronts. Yep. Huge, 100%. gigantic. Yes. And these are expensive areas. It's not just, yeah. you know, I and I said for the village last time, but it's all over. It's I Manhattan. Specific. Commercial real estate is trashed. You are completely correct. Commercial real estate is devastated. Yep. Right. People, people just said sayonara. The minute like things got bad, they like like places that are in chains, they didn't even stick around. They had bad earnings that year. Bye. So there we go. So but the small business could come back. So. Right now, you know, we can start making incentives to small businesses to take over those spaces, you know, as best as we can. And so people, so it's livable, you know, and people are excited to be back. Like, have But cafes. you brought up a very important point that most people don't bring up again, which is what I love. You're talking about New York going back to the culture that was a major, that has been a major aspect of New York City life for literally centuries now. I mean, for a long time, New York City has been about many things, but always at a core, it was culture. It was things like the opera, things like Broadway, things like comedy clubs. I mean, all the cool people who became comedians all did it first in New York City, right? Of all course, the yeah. actors is it on Broadway. There's nothing more libertarian than being a comedian. It's the freedom of speech to the, you know, one of my first shows that I produced was a big show called Great American Trash Bash, the freedom of speech to the ultimate. I love, you know, that we can have, we can speak and say our minds. And I love that about comedy. It's one of the, one of the only venues, well, that then arts that you can really, really, really do it, you know? Yeah. And kind of get away with being edgier and saying the real, the truth really, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so we can, we need to bring back the arts first because happy people, this is what I'd say, don't commit crimes as much. They don't have time. They're having too much fun. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Right. I mean, yes. uh, people that are happy and healthy, Normally, don't commit crimes. The people that are right. having crises and they're having breakdowns and they're having uh, mental health breaks and addiction issues, they commit crimes. Now, yep. we have our, obviously, we have our uh, crime families and whatnot. 
And those yeah. are always good. and those can be dealt with. But the people that are doing these crazy crimes are unhappy people. So yes, let's. We. I mean, I know it sounds like it's not the solution to the, everything, but we need to bring back our culture. We need to get people to want to come back that they can pursue their dreams. It's a place where people's dreams are made of. Absolutely. Not, yes. You know, it's not over yet. So, so Jeanne asks, now that we have a woman as governor, maybe people will be more open to voting for women like you. Do you think this, do you think having Kathy Hochul, our governor in a couple of weeks, do you think that helps you, hurts you, or has no impact? What do you I think? I don't know. It might hurt the Democratic Party, A, eh? so it could help me in that way. I don't know her being a female. I, I don't. I, I think I, I don't know much like about her policy because mm -hmm. she's Cuomo's underling, right? So we don't really know much about what she's going to bring to the table. She right. not may be great. She may not be. I mean, I don't. I think each woman and each human being should be judged for who they are. And if yep. it does help, it helps. But I think what it does is does break up our political system and prove okay. that you know, that we could, but you know, she got it by default in a way, right. you know, yep. he, he got in trouble and she got the job. So the one thing we do need though, always to run is money. That's always. Right. And Absolutely. I know people can go to Pressman for mayor, but also this comedy show, which you were talking about earlier, we, I'm going to bring back up again. There's some special things about the comedy show. And one of them is I'll be emceeing it. Yes. I'm so excited. Yes. And Larry's so, a fabulous MC. <laughs> so thank you. I will be doing that. And if you guys want tickets to that show, the link is right there at the bottom of the screen. And also, it's in the actual um, description, show description. Click on that link right there or type that in if you got if you like typing because it's a long type. If you want to type, type, whatever. Right. As long as you go there, check it out. And if you want to come, come to the show. We'd love yeah. to have you there. If you want to support the show, but you can't make it, you can still buy a ticket just because you love yeah. Stacey. You could yeah, do that. Yeah, our campaign. We have a great, you know – amount of people we need to get to, we want to compete in a race that's you know in the duopoly or the monopoly yes. here and we need the money and you know uh, third parties don't get the 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 media attention though we, we've been getting some articles i was in the jewish forward a couple of weeks ago and we mm -hmm. do get mentioned at curved a couple of times and hopefully there'll be some more articles they've, they've been reaching out to me so you know you know help us you know get the press that we need help us get the stuff we need pay our staff and be a really, you know, even stronger campaign than we already are. And so please the donate. Thing that, the thing that I want to see here more than anything, a lot of people, they say, well, wait a minute. Do I really want to donate to Stacey? And then, but this Eric Adams guy. And here's what I think is the number one issue. And Stacey, tell me if you think I'm wrong here. Mm -hmm. If we're able to get enough and raise enough money, you get on the debate stage with Eric Adams. I mean, yes. that's the critical piece. If that happens... Um, and New York City is is different. New York City is actually easier in debate stage than it is in New York State. So she actually can get in the debate stage. She yeah. gets in that stage. Now you got a shot at wowing people. That's that's the that's the Jesse Ventura chance that happened in Minnesota, right? And right. he got in the debate stage, and boom, it turned everything for him. And the three way race, the guy becomes governor. You right. got well, a five way race. So if you can knock it out of the park in that debate, you got a shot at winning. But for, for those skeptics who might go, Larry, she's not going to win. You might you might be right. We don't know that. But let me be clear. We don't know. If you think she's happen. not going to win. Did you think Tomo is going to resign? Let's be honest. Absolutely. You don't know. But let's say you're right and she doesn't win. Wouldn't you want to have a libertarian on that debate at a minimum? Win, lose, or draw. Don't you want a libertarian on the debate stage? Just Don't you want that L on the debate stage so we can see, hey, we're real. This matters. It's New York City. People are going to notice it. This is critical. Now, it helps I believe in my it. heart. Yeah, I believe it, it, in my heart that if she gets on the debate stage, Stacey can win. You might well, believe that. You might not. Whatever you debated, believe. First of all, I've debated Eric Adams on these. We had there we go. Million, you can go online. We've had a million mayoral forums. He always showed up. Yang didn't show up, and a lot of the other Garcia showed up, and Maya showed up. But but mm -hmm. he always showed up, and they always grouped me with him mm -hmm. all the time. Every time they grouped me with Adams. And there was one time he, my, I did my, I told, I, uh, we were talking about education. I said, I want to democratize education. I want to decentralize it. I want more school choice. I want people and parents to make the decision how their schools are run. I want to take it out of my office and into the communities. And he said, I agree with Stacy. That's what he said that. So, I mean, like he agreed with a lot of my policies or I pretended to, because I don't know if he had any himself, <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be the same old thing. If you want the same nonsense in your schools, it, vote for Adam. It's going to be the same thing if you vote for Adams. Yeah, so, it's true. I just so, want to say um, that. 
unless you like also, that. Also, people are bringing up ranked choice voting, which we don't have outside of the primaries yet. We're going to hope to get that soon, right? That's what we're trying to make that happen. It does happen in New York City. Um, it does happen in New York City when it comes to the primaries. Yeah. But for the actual election, it doesn't. But hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. November we'll, we'll 2nd. that will work. Yeah. And October is early voting. So, you know, tell your friends to vote. It, it, your vote does matter. You know, we can make a big difference here in New York. And well, there's a second piece, Stacey. And this is, I'm glad you brought this up because again, even if you don't win, if you make enough impact, particularly on debate stage, then the press will pick you up and ask you questions, right? Right. They'll be like, Hey, what is, what does the libertarian candidate think? Let me ask her that question. What she think? And now all of a sudden you've got the press calling you and now the libertarian means something. It's something now. They have to ask what Stacy thinks, right? She was the right. one who who almost became the mayor, right? Let's let's see how she does, right? So imagine if you came in second and beat Curtis Lee. Imagine that. That that's a possibility. You know, I was I'm I, imagine I'm that. Activist. I mean, he's just trying to grab a different things to win or to get make impact. Um we're really making plan we're like like the, the UBI, he wants to do an experimental UBI with 500 people. And I was like, 500 people is not a way to experiment on UBI. If you're going to do it, do it right. You're just doing to, you know, we have a different plan and I'm going to release it soon. Uh, mm -hmm. That's going to help people out of poverty. So, yep. and it's a well thought out plan. So I remember you were talking about having a way to get people work out of poverty. I remember when you were first talking about this with your team, I was on that call that time when you were talking about the idea of you're going to have a plan that gets people to work off and work into their right. own life. Their own life, yes. you know, and there are people yep. that are going to be disabled and they're not going to be able, you know, they're mentally disabled and haven't worked. And those are always, always going to be in our society and we have to take care of those people and elderly people and all that. But there, you know, there are people that really want to get out of poverty and they just can't find yes. the, right, the right job that fits their skills or they don't have the skills they need. Because, you know, we need to solve Or they the have a system that is only says, take the money. The second you work, it destroys you. So don't work. Just please keep taking the money. There has and to that's be in the between. between. There has yes. to be either a supplemental situation or a percentage wise. It can't be all or nothing. Everything is all or nothing. You get nothing or you get everything. So stay yes. poor and we'll can and then you you know you you won't cost you this you'll cost the state or city this much money, but there's no it's it's sad. You're keeping people poor. Essentially, yes. you slave the system, and it's very Absolutely. easy to become that. You know, particularly in this in this. Uh, atmosphere when there's not a lot of jobs even though they say there is there you know the right jobs for the right, right. people. yeah sure. the right jobs. no no i, I well, get career paths. Going. their jobs so, and their career paths yeah so let me let me if i can zip back real fast let me zip back to the show coming up this friday sure. just two days from now now it's you're going to be there i'm emceeing who else is in the show we have vanessa hollingshead kevin brennan andrew misvinsky um my friend evan weiss as well uh and Alex Carbano, the owner, he's very funny. All mm -hmm. TV credited com comedians, uh, people I've worked with, they're my friends. Uh, we might have some special guests. If you want to, you know, if any comics are watching that I love, then, you know, let me know if you want to spot. You know, we just want to, I didn't overbook it because I know we have, I want to invite some of the city council candidates also that are running to come mm -hmm. on uh, and maybe speak about their uh, their campaigns because I support them as well and, and some of our other candidates. So, yeah. Yes, people don't realize that there are several libertarians running for city council this year. And they're working very hard, working very yep. hard. And, I think, you know, I think that we need to be a team in a way, even though we might have different policies. I think there's we need to sort of join together. And I'm really into that type of thing where we are. No, I agree. And I know some of the libertarians from other parts of the country, they get upset when they see that so many libertarians in New York City tend to be left leaning libertarians. Right. And they get up, they're like, wait a minute, why? But it's New York City. Did you expect right-leaning libertarians in New York City? You find a lot of, of libertarians who actually would, would, would link closer to the Democratic Party than the Republican Party. You find that often right. in New York City. We are a super liberal city, so you're going to find a lot of people who lean Right, I mean, I'm left on some things, right? right on. I mean, I'm kind of in the middle. Like, I, I think each, mm -hmm. I take each issue as they come. I don't know if it's right or left. Some people might consider it very right. Some people might be very left. You know, I... Yep. I'm very um, open in my in the way I view policies. I look at the problem. Let's solve the problem. Is it sustainable? Is this, yep. you know, people think I just came out of, you know, telling dick jokes and uh, <laughs> it's, yes. it's basements. I, I was an activist for many years uh, mm -hmm. as I was doing my, my, my comedy and acting. I, I came mm -hmm. from, I, I used to help 
with the League of Women Voters and the students in my high school registered them to vote. And mm -hmm. I got very excited watching first time voters vote for the first time. And I was a part of that process. And then I worked yep. later on headcount in a pro with my as a comedian, helping them uh, in their social media campaign, registering people to vote bipartisan or, or no partisan. Sure. And so I'm also an activist in animal rights, mental health. I, I'm a keynote speaker throughout the country. I spoke over 150, 200 schools, colleges, treatment centers, military academies, and corporations. So people don't know much about my background. They just think I do dirty jokes on the radio and on, you know, on stage and I did some acting, but that's, I have been doing politics for many years. Uh, nice. On nice. The best, on the, on the, you know, in a different form, in a different form, writing politics. So if anybody wants to come see that cool show with all those great comedians and Stacey and me, I'll be seeing it. We're going to have a great time. This Larry. Friday. No yes. What. This Friday. It's 7 PM, right? It's seven. It's uh seven 30. The doors open eight o'clock. The show starts. 7.30, um, doors open, 8 come p.m. Come on, hang out, have start. a cocktail or whatever, uh, and uh, say hi to me and Larry and the rest of the comedians, and we could all say hi. And then, you know, I left enough time where we don't get, you know, shuffled out to, to, to sort of talk to people and, and have, you know, some of our other candidates, they want to join us to speak. So I'm really excited about that. So please come. If you can come, donate some money, uh, donate a ticket. Say, I, I live in, you know, California, Georgia, Tennessee, but I would like to donate a ticket to $25. Um, and it would really be great for, you know, it'd be great. There as we well. go. Any tickets that we can pop up will be awesome. So guys, thank you so much. And any support you can do is awesome. I want to grab a couple more if I could. Sure. Chance asks, um, if you could abolish any one law, what would it be? One law that you could abolish? I guess, I guess this is what magic powers. That's fine. I like it. It's, it's a theoretical question. So let's go theoretical. You have magic powers. The easiest Stacey. law to, uh, uh, it's that bars need to close at four o'clock. Ah, okay. Why that there one? There should be no hours. People should be, I think we need to change. I, I think we, uh, businesses should be allowed to run as o long as they want to run an hour, 24 hours if they want. As long as their employees are not being abused, like why not? It gives people more hours to work if they want to work. And I think that's a great thing to have. It also gives more jobs and people could work different hours. I know a lot of people that work the, you know, the nighttime shift and they want to sure. go out afterwards. So yeah. Absolutely. There we go. Easy day. Thank you for that one, Chance. Appreciate that. Yes. Great. So uh, Abe says, Stacey's the only candidate that can free us from the Vax passports. Look at that. So right with that, let me ask. Joe says, what will Mayor Pressman do about COVID? That's a tough question with New York City. We were the epicenter horribly, but now not as bad, New York City. We're not as bad as we were, but there's also a cultural issue here too, isn't there? Like, some people just still want to wear the mask, even though they don't have to. We had a, you guys might not know, we had a councilman on TV the other uh, other week who literally said we should wear a mask because of solidarity, not because it works or doesn't work, not because it's good or bad, not because it matters, but because of solidarity. So well, you've got a lot on your hands with this one, Stacey. That is, you know, we had a COVID, we had a COVID plan, uh, which we took off the website because well, we actually took it off the website, which was a grading system. If, if, a, if a business like is careful with the, the high back system, if they're social distancing, we have a COVID, a safety COVID plan in place. I will not have vaccine passports. Um, that is, you know. So, so you want to have a system that basically that the government just grades every business and says you get an A, you get a B, you get a C, and people can decide if they want to go in or not. Right. Right. I mean, if just be careful. Just have a clean. And you know, I have to say honestly, it keeps businesses clean. It kept my yeah. gym, my old gym clean. Um, I don't want to be, you know, oh, you're a farmer. You know, I just think, and we're not going to find anybody, but. So you don't want to shut them down and you don't want to find them. You just want to have the government give a grade. So and you know the community, Right. And the community decides if they want to go in that business or not. Right. Too bad they don't have that with dating because that would make my life easier. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Okay. I got. To, so I hope that answers your question, Joe. That That's what it is. It's a grading system and then the, the communities decide. There we go. So yes, um, Janice says, I don't know anything about you, um, but I like everything you're saying. You're Thank winning. Thank you, Janice. <laughs> I like Thank that, you. you're winning. I mean, yes. if anyone has, you know, I take like suggestions, like COVID is, this has become cultural and and, and political and it, it's not medical anymore. And so now if even if people, people are now principled in whatever side they are, and that, that to me needs to stop because it needs to come from science and purely science. Mm -hmm. And 
talk to your doctors, please. If, if your doctor says, please get the vaccine and you have 20 doctors, you know, just, you know, I have a friend, you know, fighting for his life in the hospital right now. I'm just saying, I'm not being, you know, but just make the decision based on medical. If you don't want to get it, if you feel just, you know, be respectful of the person next to you. That's all. There we go. Uh, Tom says, go Stacy. Love from Illinois. There we go. Thank you, Tom. Yes. Uh, you, you lost David because of the vegan part. Sorry. Well, you, He's kidding. Are you all He's, kidding. <laughs> He's teasing you. He's like, you lost me the vegan part. No, that's it's it. Really yes. good food. I'm not kidding. It's like delicious. And you can get it. There we go. Vegan cheese sometimes tastes better than regular cheese. but. Okay, there we go. I, I <laughs> like that. Foss Galt says, imagine a mayor who can find humor and answers in a cesspool. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Joe says, cool. how are you spreading the word for your solutions? Well, uh, being on Larry Sharp. Uh, yes, absolutely. I've been, I've been interviewed. Um, we're, we're, you know, we're spreading the word just like anybody mm -hmm. else uh, through social media, through yep. you know, the press. I'm going to do, do a press junket, obviously. I call, I've been calling people personally, libertarians throughout the country, uh, telling them about, about the race. You know, mm -hmm. uh, doing the, you know, you, people like you, I need your help. There we go. Right. I love it. Torrance says, I like this impressment a lot just as a person. I hope New York feels the same about our policies. Oh, there we go. You got Thank a friend. You. There we go. That's nice. There we go. So, yes. Um, Tom says, no passport. If I was an, in, from New York, I'd go out of spite. Well, you can still buy a ticket if you want to, Tom. Out of spite, you can. It's still there if you want to go. There is the link. Jericho says, I told the group you, Stacey, had people been able to talk to their doctor and get the vaccine, more people would get it. Many people trust health care providers. They don't just trust government. They don't trust government involvement exactly. in public health for good reason. I told that. That's my thing. I think if they would have made it where well, you're in the, a private room with your doctor, the doctor says, look, you're 85 years old. You have a heart condition. You know, it's safe. My mother just got her vaccine, the first one. You know, she was, she was, she had nothing. She was like, literally, she didn't have a Band-Aid. I mean, that's my mother. And she had a heart attack last week. I mean, last month. So, so wow. I'm just saying, yeah. I mean, the older people are doing better with the vaccine. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's whatever. It's what you want to do. But it's, it's, it's like, it, if it does help you from, you know, I don't want people, I don't want people in my city to be sick. So I want you to eat better, eat better, exercise, you know, take your vitamins, sleep well, like, I want to have yoga at the Gracie Mansion every week. I want to have parties <laughs> for the city. I want dancing on the boardwalk of Coney Island, which is my favorite thing to do. So if you want to join me every Saturday, I dance on the boardwalk with DJs, you know, doing old school. Like I want dancing and fun and and people being healthy. Like you know, self care is really important. Like there's nothing the government could do to yes. help you with that. That's Except true. Except allowing you to have dancing on the boardwalk without it restrictions. To let you go out and dance if you want to dance. Yes, if you want to go dance, you should dance. I completely agree. You should be dancing if you want to dance, 100%. Sam asked an interesting question. Sam says, um, Jack, I hope I say it right. Posobiec, I hope I say that right, made a good point. Cuomo was the biggest challenger to Kamala or Kamala in 2024, and now he's off the table. Your thoughts? Um, I'm not sure that was actually true. I think the Democrats, my view is, this is my opinion, and Stacey, you may change. Um, my view is Kamala's actually not going to run in 2024. You I think, think the Democrats so. are going to find another person because Kamala is just seriously unlikable. Democrats don't like her. Republicans don't like her. Nobody <laughs> likes her. She's a bad person. She's <laughs> un, she's unlikable. They're going to find somebody else. That's my gut. You I don't know, what do you think, Biden's Stacey? Biden's going to try again. You don't think he's... People are saying he's not able to do it again. I don't think Biden runs again. Biden had one job, get rid of Trump. That's all the Democrats wanted from him. They're like, can you just get rid of Trump for us? We hate Trump. We just want to get rid of him. Can you please be the guy that we prop up so that you just, so that people can just look at you and pretend like you're doing something? Right. And can you just, can you just get rid of Trump for us? And he just was like, okay. Alive. Don't be rude. Yes. Don't be, just, don't say anything you know, crazy. Yeah. Don't, don't hit anybody. And you just, <laughs> we can use you for that. And he was like, okay. So they made a president. Okay. He did his job. They don't care about Biden anymore. Right. They're like, whatever. We'll go, whatever. They don't, they, he, Biden did his job. They're done. Well, that's my view. You could run. It's your, maybe it's your chance to run for president. To be the Democratic nominee? I don't think so. No, I mean, to be the Libertarian nominee. It could happen, but that's 2024. Let's worry about you today. I like worrying okay. about you right now. All right. Four I know I have an election in like two months, three months. Yeah, I better get Yes, let's let's worry about that. Yes, 100%. Yeah. 
Matthew says, shout out to Stacey telling all my friends in New York City about her and the Thank comedy you. show. Please Thank you, Matt. Do. I appreciate that. Yes. It's, it's, it's this Friday the 13th, so don't, you know, hurry up and tell everybody. And if you can't come, buy a ticket. There we go. You can see the link that is right there in the description. So, yeah, um, he says, enough of the Republicrats. Let's make real change in New York. I love that. Absolutely. Joe asks, how do you feel about tiny homes? For the, love for, them. Yeah. I wish I could have one. <laughs> I wish we had <laughs> tap areas. I'm sure it's Staten Island and we have uh, areas in the Bronx where we could build these beautiful – and with shipping containers, which is very inexpensive. They make beautiful yes. – and they're, you know, we were thinking of 3D homes. And then actually Paul and I, my campaign manager, bumped into this company taking pictures. They just got on in the stock market. What is it? They just got a, uh, you know, when you get on the, what is it? On the stock market floor, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ring the bell. So, ring the, yeah. So we, we bumped into them. Like, we make tiny homes, 3D homes. I'm like, oh, we were thinking about, they're like, it's, they're very expensive. We had been under the impression that we're inexpensive. So that's not the way to go. So um, I'm changing it. I have a different way to do it. So I think shipping containers, which are adorable mm -hmm. and they are durable. They don't, um, they're weather resistant and they're yep. sustainable and for the, and they're great for the environment. So it's something that I'm thinking of. Uh, tiny homes are great. I, I wish we could do more of them. There we go. I love that. Daniels uh, says not being devil's advocate, but isn't affordable homes similar to section eight housing? My no. opinion but what about creating more opportunities for them to want to get jobs? Well, that was part of her plan, but go ahead, Stacey. Well, um, Section 8 is very different. You get a voucher. Affordable yep. homes, they have where you you're, it's based on your income, so you pay the amount of rent. Like like Manhattan Plaza, for instance, is an artist home. There's other homes like that. So, the, you know, it, they base your rent on your income. Yes. So if you have a good yep. year, you pay a certain amount. If you have a bad year, you pay a certain amount. So there are people paying a lot of money in Manhattan Plaza, and there are people paying, like, very little. So it balances out depending on how successful you are during the year. That 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 model has been working relatively well. They do it in veterans' homes in, in um, the Bronx also. And in their case, you pay one-third of your income, whatever your income is. Right. If your income is high, you pay a lot more. And some vets actually stay with higher because they want to be around other vets and they want to help them out. They become mentors. Right. So it, they're it, actually it, paying a little extra. And those and – those, and those, Buildings are beautifully kept, yep. and they're diverse naturally in, in, in like all different races and cultures and ages. So things happen naturally, like you know, integration of different cultures happen naturally if you do it. Yes, right. uh huh. Absolutely. Missy says helps people to shop with for free. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. She's being good. I, I've been talking all about you. Please, you're important, and please also like, comment, share, everybody. Let people know that's how we get out of this. That's how we get out of our, our our shadow banning. Like and comment and share and let people know this is going on. Please do that. And of course, if you want to help out, help me out. Go take the world's smallest book quiz. Now, here's the good part. If you live in New York City or someone knows from New York City, send this quiz to them. If they take it and they realize they're more libertarian than they might think, then guess what? Have them go and see pressmanformayor.com. Say that's it. That's that's the <laughs> issue, right? So send them the first piece, which is the test, to see if they're actually more libertarian than they think. And if you've taken it already, then share it, please. It does matter. They're my sponsors. They help this show go. So if you want to keep my sponsors happy, please take the world's smallest book quiz. The link is there. And if your friends like it and they go, wait a minute, maybe I'm more libertarian than I thought. Pressman for Mayor. They can see what she's doing all good and always like comment and share and if you want to help out for the show this friday you can click right there 25 dollars for a ticket come see me i'll be there come see stacy so we're great comedians we'll all be there it's not a vax passport place just come on in enjoy. Come enjoy yourself yeah just come and have a good time and you can do that if you'd like to so thank you yes um andrew asked a crazy question andrew says if stacy gets elected can she work with governor hokel why not? I <laughs> work with anybody. Well, she, is, <laughs> she is linked to Cuomo. I mean, it's a valid point, right? I have to meet the woman. I don't know. I like that. Okay. There we I go. Mean, I'm going to have to, you know, I have to work alongside people of all parties and different beliefs. And I, you know, just like the Libertarian Party, you have to find common ground. And I'm going to, I'm going to stick up for my city though. No one's going to bully my city around. So there we go. I like that. Lepke's on your side. He says, New York had an amazing music scene. Back before struggling artists got priced out. This is your That's point. That's exactly you what happened. To come back. They all went to Austin and Florida and, you know, some went to L.A. because they could even, that was even more affordable. So a, a lot of people just left New York 
they, they, they went to the southern states. They went to Asheville. Yes, I know yeah. Asheville. You're right. A lot went to Asheville. Yes. Yeah, a lot and of people they called. should have been here. Yeah, and you know we were the you know the hub of culture, and this is before the pandemic. I want to say this has been going on before the pandemic. Like right. it was going on through the '90s. People really couldn't. Afford, it was hard to kind of afford, and then. 9-11, it was still even after that was it was hard to afford and we lost some people you know both you know through 9-11 and you know through uh they, they just left they didn't want to live here sure. so absolutely so we have yeah. a, we have a lot of work to do we, we can't be in denial we have a lot of work to do to get people no but back. you're you're the only candidate who speaks about something like that that is a that is an underlying piece to new york city that most people don't get even if banking leaves one day even if business leaves one day art can't leave new york it city cannot leave. the culture no. it, that there's it's it's drilled into what we are from the cotton club of harlem to to walking tours in wall street right. to broadway to comedy clubs in you know alphabet city it doesn't matter it's everywhere it's everywhere. And that's something we can never, you know, people, a lot of these uh, other candidates are very fear-based. Like, yes, you're going to get hurt. They're crying. There are criminals. You know, we can't live like that. We need Absolutely. to live in peace, you know, to feel safe inside. You know, safety doesn't always just come from like, oh, the police are, safety comes from, it's a feeling, a, a feeling, of being, you know, because anything, you can get hit by a car, you know, so you need to live in, you know, you can't lead with fear. Telling Absolutely. people, well, if you don't vote for me, it's going to be dangerous. That's not, and that's not even true because they have no control really. Over, right. I mean, Absolutely. Random acts of violence are random acts of violence. And th that's so, why they're called random acts of violence because they're random. Joe says, quotes you, nothing more libertarian than being a comedian. I love it. He likes it. So you, 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 you're winning with Joe. You're winning with <laughs> Joe for you. sure. Yes. Thank you, Joe. Absolutely. Probably come to our show. Yes. Um, Justin says, know who commits crimes? People who have abruptly had their life livelihood upended by government mandates, Absolutely. closures, and owner's regulatory burden. Without removing these, I've got no idea who in their right mind would move to New York City to start a business, a new job. It's a valid point. A very valid point. It's, yes. you know, desperate people with nothing. You know, I lost my my career for a while. I couldn't yep. tour. I love touring. It's one of my favorite things to do. I As a speaker, as a comedian. I, every year I would do a show down in Florida as an actor. You know, they shut down production for film. Yes. I lost my absolutely. entire career. It was very scary. And my yes. day, any, any kind of day jobs, restaurants. I mean, I wasn't really necessarily a restaurant worker, but I always worked in gyms doing personal training. Couldn't yep. do that. Like anything I could possibly make money doing was gone for a few months. Yep. So absolutely. It, you know, it was very scary for a while. And Absolutely. they had a lot of trouble. Totally Our city couldn't get the unemployment out to people. That was a big problem. It was a bureaucratic, bureaucratic disaster. Yep. They should be ashamed of themselves. So. Uh, yes, yes, and yes. Totally true. It is. It's you're 100 percent right. And what used to be powerful about New York was, you know, it was a mecca for talent, right? Yeah. So uh -huh. if you wanted talent, you came to New York, and there was so much talent here. But now people found out you don't have to live in New York to have that talent. You can live someplace else and just do it virtually. We're it's now in a virtual a world. Yeah. It's but you can't a beat lot. the experience. You can't beat the experience of coming out of the uh, of a That's train the station. culture piece you said. You're right. You can't beat the culture. You can't phone that in. And hailing a cab and, and you know, go into a Broadway show and then go into Joe Allen's afterwards for, for you know, a snack and, you know, having drinks with your friends. And you, know, you can't and beat I'm going to give this. You know this, Stacey, because you know actors. People always ask actors. Why? You're a big actor. Why would you go to Broadway, right? You make so much more when you do a movie and you work so much less when you do a, when you do a movie. Why are you going to Broadway? And the actors always say the same thing. The live it's, experience. It's a live experience. Yes, that they're fine. As long as they make their millions in the movie, they'll come and do a Broadway show, which they'll get paid less and they'll work harder. But they do it because they, they you hear them all the time. Well, when I'm on the set for the movie, there's no clapping. The director's is like, cut, good, next. It's right? very it's dead energy there. in a movie. Like, it's go, you're there for 15 hours a day. Literally, I've done, like, a lot of films in my time. You're, yeah. you're there for hours a day. You don't get cl the claps. You do one line. You go back and forth. We do it again 87,000 times. Then the director, you know, they do a different angles. You know, but, yeah. and then, but Broadway, you're in. First of all, it's a better job because I've, was a, you know, in theater, I, I had a job mm -hmm. as an actor yep. for five years doing off-Broadway 
It was my day, mm -hmm. my, my, my whole job. You go yeah. in at, at a certain time, you know, you can, the show ends at a certain time and you go home at a certain time and you can go yeah. out. You can make, you can't make plans when you're on a movie set. Ah, uh, okay. There we by go. The way, yep. FYI. There we go. You know, it goes long. Even if you're a celebrity, there, I mean, you could maybe, you, even you're the biggest star in the world, you can go to three in the morning. Your life is taken up by that film. So well, there we go. So Abe says he's going to be there. Awesome. So Thank he's you, showing Abe. up. Awesome. Thank you, Abe. I appreciate that. Torrance asked a question. Is there any way to watch the show virtually? Um, I have to ask the comedians if we could film it because a lot of comedians don't like to be filmed, so we'd have to sign sure. a waiver. So I'll ask if they want to. We can maybe film it. Uh, that remind me to call my videographer. So there we go. It. So maybe. Thank you, Torrance. And thank you. And then we could we could sell it. You know, as a uh, as a campaign thing. So yeah. There we go. Thank you. Abe says, if Stacy gets in the debate stage, she'll skyrocket. Look at that. I love that. Thank you, Abe. Um, yes. I really want to debate. I've debated Eric, and I think it would be a good debate. I mean, you know, I, I, I think it would be exciting to debate him again in public in a big forum. And I think it's fair. I think it's only fair to allow us to debate. We are the third largest party in the country, and we need to be on that stage. I agree. Shelly says, to me, the draw of New York City has always been the mixing of many cultures. Yes. Also true, yeah. In many you areas, you can learn about many cultures and taste various foods from around the world in a few square blocks. That's a very good point because you can't buy that. You can't buy having, you know, Korean food on one block and then going around the corner and having Italian and then Jamaican food. And in my neighborhood, we have, you know, every type of food. So Russian food. And it's amazing. I've, I've eaten every kind of food imaginable. So absolutely, yes, my own absolutely. Cooking, so. <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea. And I think the idea of a comedy show to kind of re-kick the kind of opening of New York City to get your your campaign back in, in the in the open mode. Right. To prep right. us for the upcoming. Um, the debates are actually in October. Is that right? Right. Yeah. In like two months from now. You know, look, in, yeah, been, in two months. We've been campaigning in half of a lockdown. It's, yes. you know, and it's not the easiest time to campaign. Uh, Absolutely. And, you know, usually a lot of, especially in the beginning when people were going, you know, having get togethers, things just really started. People just, you know, started just socializing in the last couple of months. So it's been, you know, a, 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 tr a challenge, really. Everything's yes, virtual. Absolutely. So this and is that's like, the issue, right? Yeah. Matthew says libertarians on the debate stages open up doors all over. I think he's right. Yeah. We need libertarians making moves like this. It's like pebbles turning into boulders, turning into an avalanche of change. Woo! I like that. Look at that, Matthew. Very nice. That's I love you. that. Yeah. So we're going to turn into an avalanche, Stacey. That's what we're doing. We are. We have to. I mean, you know, we start small. We have, I know we have some elected officials. We had someone on my team. Sasha Cohen had to leave because he got a uh, city clerk, town clerk in his town. Uh, he was in my, on my team for a while, uh, but he got elected, which is great. So we need, you know, a lot of people getting elected. We have great city council candidates that I really love and they're working hard for you. So, you know, check them out. Uh, okay. So yeah, we need to David really- says, we need a good show in the debate stage to get the duopoly to run for the money. That's true, right? That's that's when they'll actually do something, right? Absolutely. I agree. Right. We so, need, I need to get on that debate stage, guys. Uh, Perina doesn't like it. She's upset. She says she is going to spoil it for the Republican candidate, Kurt, uh, the Republican candidate Curtis to win. I think he deserves it. As for Stacey, I never heard of her. Well, let me touch that piece for a second. Um, Curtis Lewa, to be forward with you, I have nothing against Curtis Lewa, but he's not going to win. It's six to one Democrat to Republican in New York City. Six to one. Those Democrats are not going to vote for a Republican. Not Curtis Lewa for sure. They're not going to vote for him. They're not going to vote for a Republican. They're going to vote either for a Democrat or an outsider. So that means Democrat, Libertarian, Green, um, they'll vote Independent. There's no Green Line. There's no Green Line this year. Well, I'm saying, but that's what New York City people right, vote, right, right. right? Green is never part of candidate. But they'll right. vote They'll vote other Independent, something different, or they'll vote Democrat. They're not going to vote Republican. It's not what they do. They just don't do it. So I don't think he's going to win. The reality of it is, um, Curtis had an opportunity, by the way, and this is what many of you don't know. Curtis and I sat down and talked when I ran for governor. Okay. And I said, well, how about give me the reform party line? And I'll run as a libertarian reformer. And I'll run on two lines. What do you think about that idea? We had a discussion about it, whether we should or shouldn't do it. And he was like, nope, going Republican. He's going to get me all the votes. You won't. Nope. 
He gave it to he gave the line to Mark Molinaro, who did absolutely nothing for the reform wow. line whatsoever, and the reform party went away. He literally killed the reform party. That's a true yeah. story. He so, has a lot of great um, reputation. If you around during the age, um, I'm not gonna get he into it, but yeah, a lot of my Italian saying, friends don't like him. <laughs> all I'm saying, uh, Prina, is it, he's I'm nothing against him, but he 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 was not a savvy politician. That he was not a savvy politician, and he's gonna win anyway. It's impossible. It's it's literally impossible. There's a better chance of Stacey winning than it is him. I'm not even exaggerating with that because the Democrats are not going to vote for him. They might vote for Stacey, but they're not going to vote for him. So I know that may sound crazy, but in this case, she has a better chance of winning than he does. And my animal rights, I'm much, I've been doing this, you know, I, it's, I'm not just about no-kill shelters. I want animal rights all around. And I've been doing, I already have a plan, not just saying no kill. I know who I'm going to bring in, a, a gentleman named Nathan Winograd to help us make no kill. He's been, he has a proven record. I've been talking to him for 20 years, literally, since I did my TV show about saving animals. So yeah, you may there not hurt me. It doesn't mean I, I'm, I'm better or worse. You know, people think you have That's to hear right. Yeah. McDonald's suck. Um, I've heard of McDonald's, but. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, David says, uh, libertarians get nothing done. Well, here's what I would ask you, David. It's a serious question here. And I'll give you an example of when I think libertarians have actually made some actual impact in a very special way. Last year, death of George Floyd. When G George Floyd dies, Republicans yell back the blue, Democrats yell defund the police, and no one does anything. But one person did something, got everything started. And that was our one libertarian congressman. And his name at that time was Justin Amash. Yes. He's left the, the, the uh, Congress since then. But then he was the only libertarian congressman. He actually went and made a decision. He said, why don't we start to fix something? How about reform? We'll start with ending qualified immunity. And he created the first tripartisan bill ever. Because he was the only libertarian, he had to cross the aisle on both sides and get both sides to agree. He had to make a bill that both sides would agree with. And he did. But then the Democrat, Nancy Pelosi, and the Republican at that point was Mitch McConnell. None of them would, would have the bill voted on because really? we can't have that. So in reality, the duopoly fights and gets nothing done. The libertarian can actually cross both sides and talk to each side and actually get something done. I would say it's the opposite, David. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So just my two cents. So just my two cents. Um, let's see here. Uh, if I can keep going down here. Um, uh, Alexander says, let's talk policy, Stacey. Sure. De Blasio was a terrible mayor for sure. But the one thing that I like was declaring a moratorium on any new fossil fuel infrastructure. Would you continue this? I think it's a great, I think we, why should we build, if we can build uh, non fossil fuel infrastructure, why would we, you know, go backwards if we don't have to, right? I mean, well, there we go. Okay. I'm not, I'm I think, you know, if, if things are doable and, and it's sustainable, why not continue on positive? You know, de Blasio didn't do everything wrong, right? But, you know, there are certain things that we can continue working. Things there, you know, we need to make a, our city cleaner environmentally. Mm -hmm. sure. And if things work and it's affordable to do so and sustainable, why the hell not? Okay. Thank you for that question. Great question. Matthew agrees uh, with you. He says people need hand hands up and not need to get handouts. Yes, agreed. So another, uh, this one is more about cash when it comes to the police force. Daniel says, Stacy, would you want to put more money into the police force for more training? Maybe we encourage small communities to police their own? Do you have a plan to crack down on crime? Well, that's a great question. Well, first of all, everyone's like, defund, fun. It depends. It doesn't matter. Like, you can give the police force money to retrain, to reform. You know, you're not just sticking them in salary. So it depends how you fund the police or, defund, you know, you could take money here and put it into training, adding psych psychiatrists and psychologists to the police force. Uh, for people with mental health issues, the police shouldn't be doing everything. We need to bring it down to the communities where they, you know, there's a connection. We need to build bridges with the police, you know. So there's a, a, a place for them. They need to stop going after uh, small petty crimes like Lucy's and mm -hmm. not nonsense like that, and really go after like the violent crimes and, and you know get get the gangs uh, kind of out of New York. So yep. there's, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways to go about it. It's not, you know, we use these, these taglines, defund, uh, fund, you know, refund, you know, whatever you want to, there's all these uh, snap, you know, like hashtags. We got to just yep. look at the problem and solve the problem. 
How much money Absolutely. do we want to put in our police force? What's going to be the most effective way to use our police? How, you know, how do we stop crime? Is it detective work? Is it having plain co closed cops? Is it, you know, is it, you know, just legal, having less laws? You know, there's a lot of things to really look at. It's not just one, there's like a lot of little pieces, moving parts. So, sure. yeah, I have a lot of plans and they're all looking at each moving part and, and seeing what works, helping people feel safer from the police that are afraid of the police, as well as finding a way the police can work without being, you know, escalating crime or escalating sure. the situation. We need to de-escalate situations. So there's Absolutely. a lot of moving parts going on. And I have a lot of plans on how to do that. And I've talked I to a lot that. of police officers. Because they Alexander, have a, that's their job too. I mean, there's jobs for everybody. Absolutely. Um, Alexander says, I enjoyed working the graveyard shift. See, so you're right. Some people like working the late stuff. I like, I'm a night, I like the nighttime too, obviously. <laughs> I, there we go. I like that. So uh, Matthew actually teases, he says, I like my mask because I can make faces at people and they don't know it. That is an advantage. <laughs> That's true. It does like that. Yes. Paula yes. says, grading system is a good idea. Let the market okay. decide. She likes that. There Great. we go. Well, some people don't I, I like it. it. They don't like, I don't know. It's an idea. It's, a, it's, a, it's an idea. It's a solution to a problem. It may there not be go. the perfect solution, but it's a solution to a problem. Stay, uh, uh, Peter says, Stacey, you have my vote. There thank you, so Peter. Thank you. Tell your friends. <laughs> there we go. That's one right there. I love it. Absolutely. Matthew says, uh, Larry, what Stacy stands on vaping and the New York City flavor ban? Do you have I, a... I, uh, I, um, I was the vaping candidate, <laughs> according to now. I think that, you know, as long as vaping is, you know, I don't know why they banned it. I, I think because a few bad actors sold bad vapes and then they banned the whole thing. But they were THC vapes, by the way, that they from vitamin E. Um, you know, it's your choice if you're going to vape. People are going out of state to get the vapes anyway. Yep. I don't think, you know, I'm not encouraging children to vape or anything like that. So don't get, a lot of people with parents with uh, children are like, you you want my kids to vape? I'm like, no, I don't want your kids to vape. But I want people that are adults to make the choice if they want to vape that they can get it in the city. They don't have to buy it in Florida and bring it up here. Like that my team does. Yeah. There we go. Janice asks, what time do you dance on the boardwalk? I'll be there. Oh, I go when the DJ starts around five or six on Saturdays. There we go. Five or six on Saturdays. That's where she will be. I love that. All oh, good. I love that. So let me see if I can do this one here. Uh, Alexander thinks Biden will run again. Okay. Maybe. He thinks uh, he will. Maybe. I, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I think no, but you might be right. Joel says uh, Kamala is unlikable, but the Dems did not realize Hillary was very unlikable and lost running her. Joe, I think they learned that lesson. I do. I think the Democrats learned that lesson. I'll then do it again because you're right. Hillary was also very unlikable, right? And I think Kamala is also uh, unlikable. Yeah. I don't know. You have a, a view on that? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, does unlikability make you lose? I mean, it's it, Right, like it's it's just Biden part two. So if you want Biden part two, <laughs> is that that works? Yeah, it's, I like it's that. You know, in different steps. So it's like it's, it's going to be just a continuation of that administration if if she does run, unless there we go. new shakes up the party somehow. There we go. Uh, Janice says, if I buy a ticket for the show to donate to you, do you give it to someone or do you double sell it? Just checking. We we'll love to donate and have someone walking by be given my ticket. I would love to do that. Sure. There we go. You have your answer, Janice. There we go. Absolutely. Shelly says, Asheville is very artsy. It is. There's an interesting um, stat I remember from a couple years back. I don't know if it's still um, the same stat, but Asheville by percentage had the second highest gay population of, of, of any city in America except for uh, San Francisco. Really? San Francisco got the highest by percentage. Oh, and I think Asheville had the number two. That's what I heard. I don't know if that's still true, but that was probably about 15 years ago. Um, well, New York a local place that people would come to if they were gay or trans, they would feel safe here. And so that was a place where they would come out. You know, I remember the 80s and 90s with Keith Haring and the dance clubs. And I was a little young back then, but I remember the 80s when we had like, you know, people were coming out and the age of AIDS. I grew up through, through, through that and uh, we survived it. So I think we could survive COVID, you know? <laughs> I, I think it's survivable. Absolutely. 100%. So, um, Lepke says, one of the best things about New York is ethnic diversity. That's true. And I live in Queens, by the way. And Queens oh. is the is the most diverse county in the country. Unbelievably diverse. It's amazing. Yes. 
most most in the entire country. So and everyone gets along. You know, absolutely. So I guess the thing I, I wanna I wanna pick up here, if I could, I want to go back to what I think is one of the most important things that we've been talking about here, which is this Friday. It this is Friday. a it is a fundraiser and a get together and a kind of reopening thing. Guys, if you can make it, I'm emceeing. Stace will be there along with a list of great comedians. If you can come, please come. And yeah. you, it's very simple. Click the link that's in the description or right here. You see it, what it says here. You can click here, buy a ticket. If you can show up, show up. If you want to just help out Stacy, you can still just buy a ticket and knock them if you want to. Or check out PrussmanForMayor.com. Click donate button. It's the, same, it's the same thing. To. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's like you could just you could give more. Absolutely. And if you want to give more per ticket, you want to come and you want to spend fifty dollars a ticket because you want to give more <laughs> yes. and be generous and you have the money. You could do that as well. You could buy it, you could donate a ticket. Um, whoever that uh, young lady Janice, if she wants, yep. I you know I can have it in honor of Janice that you bought. So for someone who can afford a ticket, because I have friends that if you want to come, you can't afford it. There's a ticket waiting for you. Absolutely. So any of those. Um, our options for you. Anything I should say, um, or we should talk about before we wrap this up? Um, Crazy. I, I really, I really love New York, and it, I, it to be mayor of New York is, is would be an honor. And the love I want to share with the rest of New York, and to watch people happy here would would make would be a, a, a I would I would be honored to lead a city and have a free city where people could live and be who they want. And that's why I want to be mayor of New York. And I, and that was something I wanted to do t five, 10 years ago, actually, before we even talked. And I believe we are not over here. And we are, we have so many, we have so many uh, beautiful places to go. And I think we just had a, a stop or a pause button for a second, but we can, we're going to fly, you know, and I'm, I'm really excited about what comes next. I, I we're love the that. That's amazing. Flame. There we go. I, I love it. We should definitely do that. I'm I'm 100 on board with that. It's great. Uh, for those of you who have other, I couldn't get all the questions. I had so many things pop up in the chat. You can always reach out to Stacy's team directly from her either her Facebook page, which the link is there, or through Twitter, the link is there too. Yeah. Or through her website. If you have questions or comments, please ask her there. I'm sure her team will get it and then get the answer back to you. I appreciate it, everyone. Thank you so much for today. Thank you. Today, Stacy. Thank you so much for showing up. Thank you so I much, Brian. Be well, yes, and I can't wait till Friday. There we go. I will see you all, I hope, Friday, 730 in New York City. Guys, have a great night. Bye-bye.